We go now to New York City and its mayor, Eric Adams, a Democrat. Mr. Mayor, good morning to you. Good morning to you as well. You said that the president and the White House have failed New York City and that you don't have access to federal dollars to deal with the migrant crisis. But the administration reportedly has pledged $30 million to deal with those arrivals. Why the discrepancy? I don't think that's a discrepancy. We've spent uh, over a billion dollars. We're projected to spend uh, close to $4.3 billion, if not more. Uh, these estimate was based on a number of migrants coming to the city, and those numbers have clearly increased. We are get, we're, we received in several days last week alone uh, over 900 migrants on days. Uh, a week, over two weeks ago, approximately 4,200 in one week. When you look at the price tag, uh, $30 million comes nowhere near what this city is paying for a national problem. So you are getting federal help. It's just not sufficient to the needs you have. Well, we've been extremely transparent uh, what the needs are. Uh, when a city that just uh, cycled out of the uh, financial crisis of COVID is now hit with an additional uh, over a billion dollars in our budget and potentially four point over four billion dollars uh, in the out, out years, uh, that is not the price tag that is attached to what is cost to handle this national problem. You know, it, it's New York City's own laws that require it to give anyone who seeks shelter a, a shelter. Uh, and Republicans often zero in on these sanctuary city uh, definitions as a migrant magnet. Is that law, are those regulations, what's bringing migrants to New York City? Well, let's be clear. The migrants and asylum seekers are paroled into the country through CF, through CF uh, the border, Custom Border Patrol. Uh, that is totally different from those who come to the country without uh, any documentation. And that's the definition when you look at sanctuary cities. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that the Republicans for far too many years have failed to deal with real immigration reform. Uh, this is a national issue. No city should go, be going through this, uh, including uh, El Paso, Brownsville. Uh, when I went to El Paso, uh, Texas, and saw what was happening there, I raised the same concern. This should not be the burden of Chicago, Washington, Houston, Denver, and New York City. Uh, that is what we want to focus on. How do we have real comprehensive immigration reform? And how do we have a real decompression strategy? And we really need to allow the migrants, asylum seekers, to be able to have work status so that they can actually work in the various areas that we're looking for employment. Um, you have started to bus migrants upstate within New York, and that has kicked off some legal disputes, I understand, with some of those counties. You just talked about decompression. Have you asked the governor, who is a fellow Democrat, to, to help you find housing for these migrants elsewhere in the state? Uh, yes, and she has been a real partner, as well as Senator Schumer, Congressman Jeffries, and the New York delegation. Uh, they have been extremely helpful in trying to, number one, get the dollars coming out of Washington, D.C., but also the governor here in coordinating our efforts. We are continuing to ask her to uh, f help us find space throughout the state. Uh, but New York City, again, is the economic engine of the state and the country. We believe the entire state should participate in a decompression strategy. And it's unfortunate uh, that there has there have been some lawmakers in counties that are not carrying on their role of ensuring that this is a decompression strategy throughout the state. And some have, have we have witnessed in some municipalities where they lied and stated that veterans were being forced out of uh, hotels, which was untrue and found out to be fabricated. So these types of tactics are just uh, anti-American and anti-New York City. You're talking about some of those news headlines um, that the New York State Attorney General's office is now examining allegations that those reports were completely false. Um, and, and you're saying right there that that was not happening. But on the question of decompression, would it be more helpful if it was the federal government directing where migrants are moved to throughout the United States instead of you as New York City's mayor trying to figure out where you can send them within your state? Yes, it would. We have 108 thousand cities, villages, towns. Uh, if everyone takes a small portion of that 
and if it's coordinated uh, at the border to ensure that those who are coming here uh, to this country in a lawful manner is actually uh, moved mm -hmm. throughout the entire country. It is not a burden on one city. And the numbers need to be clear. Uh, we received over 70,000 uh, migrant asylum seekers uh, in our city. 42,000 are still in our care. If yeah. this is properly handled at the border level, uh, this issue can be resolved while we finally get Congress, uh, particularly the Republican Party, to deal with a sure. comprehensive immigration policy. But uh, have you asked the federal government, have you asked Homeland Security, have you asked President Biden to figure this out in terms of what you're talking about? Take migrants from the border and move them throughout the United States so they're not just landing in cities like yours. I traveled to uh, Washington several times. I had conversation with FEMA about uh, financial allocation and proper resources to the city. I had communications with the White House on several occasions. I have communicated with our congressional delegation who clearly understands uh, how important this issue is. So, yes, we've had numerous conversations uh, to resolve this issue in a, in a real way. And it's just, unf again, unfair to the city of New York and all of yeah. our cities to carry the burden of a national problem. Right. And, and there is no federal decompression strategy that you're talking about there. Um, do you think going into the 2024 election that the issue of immigration is a political vulnerability for Democrats and the president? Do they need to talk about it more? Well, uh, I am clear that every time we talk about this issue, people talk about politics. I'm talking about people, human beings. I'm talking about people who come Understood. to this country. I'm talking about people who are spending many hours taking the care of them. And I'm talking about the people of my city who they are watching their city being transformed by not having the proper resources and the proper planning, I believe, to get this done. So this is about people, the same people I protected for 22 years as a police officer. I'm concerned about them now. Understood. Understood. I'm asking you that, though, because we see CBS polling that shows Republicans and Democrats get blamed for not solving this issue. But there's a growing perception that the president is not tough enough. An increasing majority of Americans are calling for the administration to be tougher. That's 41 percent of Democrats. You know, there have been a lot of articles saying your public criticisms of the president have irritated the White House, and that is why you are not on his campaign advisory board. Um, why have you gone public? Is your private prodding going on deaf ears? Well, no, I, I'm, I'm going public because I have, I have one role here in the city, and that is to protect New Yorkers. That's what I was elected to do. That's what I did throughout my entire adult life and create a safe environment for our city. I have several conversations, as I indicated, uh, with the White House and other uh, electors, both nationally and locally. We have to resolve this issue. And as you stated, the poll clearly indicates Republican and Democrats. Uh, the Republicans have, Republicans have blocked comprehensive immigration reform. While we're doing that, I have a crisis here in the city that I love and yeah. the city that the people, of this, and the people of this city deserve to get the support that they need. I want to ask you one other issue. There has been a lot of national attention about that tragic event on the New York City subway. Um, Jordan Neely, who was homeless and struggled with mental health issues, was forcibly restrained and then choked by a subway rider named Daniel Penny. He lost his life. Um, why do you think that the system you have in place to deal with homelessness and to deal with mental health failed Jordan Neely? When you do an examination, uh, just as I talked about public safety issues and how we had to get guns that were clearly uh, saturated in our cities, uh, so too in October and prior to that, I talked about uh, how we must look at involuntary removal of those who are cannot take care of their basic needs and are in danger to themselves. You know, it breaks my heart how uh, Jordan lost his life, who happens to have the same name as my son. And our focus should be on how he died, and we need to look at how he lived and ensure that the other Jordans out there receive the care they deserve. I spend many days in the subway system talking to those who are in that condition. And if we don't get help from the state government to ensure that we can use involuntary removals for those who are in danger to themselves and 
uh, can't take care of their basic needs, uh, we may be fi facing a potential problem like this again. And that's what we need to do. We need to make sure that we go after those other Jordan Neelys that are there looking for care. Mr. Mayor, thank you for your time this morning. Face the Nation will be back in one minute. Stay with us.